Hi everyone, welcome to video 6 of chapter 3. In the previous videos, we talked about um, putting the linear programming problem into a canonical form where we require the basic solution shall be feasible, which is not always obvious on how to do that. So in this video, we will dive a little bit into that topic and we will learn a kind of a geometric interpretation of this condition and use that as a way of finding a set of basic variables that in the end will give us feasible solutions. Okay, let's take our favorite example, look into it one more time. So this, we have been working on this through several videos and then we look at it again. Okay, so how can I decide which two variables to choose such that the solution would be feasible? Okay, keep that question in mind. So we are now going to rewrite this system in vector form. So fortunately now I have only two equations, so I can rewrite this in vector form such that each vector is a vector of two elements, right? So I have x1 multiplied by the coefficient here is 1, 0, so this is 1, this is 0. x2 coefficient is 1, 3, that's what I have here. And for x3, I have 2, 1, so I get 2, 1 here. And then for x4, I get 1 and 8, 1 and 8. Equal, the right hand side is 6, 3. Okay, so I write this as x is a scalar value or the xi's are scalar numbers, multiply by these vector, which are constants, and then I add them up, and equal to this vector. I use this to express equivalently this equation. Okay, and we see that we have all these constant vectors. Let's give them a name. I will call them just vi, where i is the same index as x. So this is x1, v1. v1 is this vector. x2, v2, and that's v2. And this is v3, and this is v4. And this right-hand side vector, call it v. Once I have done this reformulation of my problem, then I can view it as a new type of problem. I can ask the following question. How do you express the vector b, which is given, and I'm also given four vectors, v1, v2, v3, v4. I wish to express b in terms of a linear combination of the four vectors v1, v2, v3, v4 with the coefficients x1, x2, x3, x4 which are restricted, so non-negative. Okay, So it becomes some kind of a different problem but equivalent to the previous one. Asking question in this way for this specific example has some geometric meanings. Let's take a look. Okay, let's try to ask a question, the first one. Let's say, I want to know if I can use x1 and x2 as the basic variables. That will give a feasible solution. Can I do that? And how do I answer this question? Okay, so we know if these two shall be taken as basic variables, then x3, x4 are non-basic variables and they are set to be zero in the basic solution. If these are zero, then we can rewrite our problem 
So x3, x4, those two terms are gone. We just have x1, v1, plus x2, v2, equals b, where we want x1, x2 to be restricted. Okay? So for convenience, I repeat these factors. So v1 is 1, 0, v2 is 1, 3, and b is 6, 3. So the question is now the following. Can this vector b be expressed as a linear combination of v1 and v2 with non-negative coefficients x1 and x2? Okay, so now let's draw a picture. Here in this picture, I draw vector v1, and actually here only the direction matters. So v1 is 1, 0, horizontal, and v2 is 1, 3, points up with the angle less than 90 degree. And then the b vector is 6, 3, which goes in this direction. Okay, So we wish to find the vector b as a linear combination of v1, v2, with positive coefficient. So here comes an important um, observation. If I am given v1 and v2, then there is this angle formed by these two rays. Okay? So I have this section in the, in the plane cut by the v1 and v2 ray. In between here, we see that if I want to have a vector that is a linear combination of v1 and v2 with positive coefficients, what does it mean? Let's say I have one unit of v1 and one unit of v2. So the vector will be you take one unit of v1 and then you go into the direction of v2, take one unit and you end up here, right? And you can think of various combinations. Take two units of V1, one unit of V2, you will end up here, or any combination. Which means they will all lie in this shaded region that has these two rays as its boundary. And because these two vectors are linearly independent, the inverse is also true, that is, any point in this region will have a unique representation of v1 and v2 as the linear combination. Okay? So, all we need to check now is to see that if the b vector lies within this region. So, in this graph, it's quite clear that this b is in this shaded area. And therefore, we can find a positive x1 and x2 such that b is a linear combination like that. Okay, so um, we can conclude now. x1 and x2 can be used as basic variables which will give us a basic feasible solution. Okay, so now let's look at a slightly different situation. With the same problem, I'm asking the following question. Can I use x2 and x4 as the basic variable? And that will give me a feasible solution. Okay, so for convenience, I repeat the vectors here. That's my v2. That's v4, and this is b. This is taken from the previous slide. Okay, so from the previous discussion, we know that we just need to find out the directions of these three vectors and then to find out if b lies in the wedge formed by v2 and v4. Okay, so let's draw these two 
v2 and v4. So v2 is 1, 3. We draw here, so it's this direction. And v4 is 1, 8. We draw it here, so it's in this direction. So these two rays form a rather sharp pointed wedge in between. So that's the shaded area. And if the b vector shall be inside this shaded area, then, then it's good. And then, okay, we draw b now, which is 6, 3. So we see that, unfortunately, the b vector does not lie in the shaded region, which means I cannot express b as a linear combination of v2 and v4 with the positive coefficient, which also means the basic function would not be feasible. Okay, so here are words of uh, what we have just concluded. And if the basic variables x2 and x4 cannot be both non-negative, then this is not good. Then we should not use them as our basic variables. So the answer to the question is no. Okay, so um, we have a clear-cut example of no, and uh, also a clear-cut example of yes. And let's look at another ex case that's uh, a bit delicate. So the question three here. What about x3? Have we noticed something interesting about x3 or v3? Okay, so we see that this is the b63, and the vector v3 is 2, 1. And we see that they are parallel. They point in the same direction, it's just b is longer, right? b is 3 times v3. That means I can write the following. I can write b equal 3 times v3, which is already b, then I can add 0 times vi for any other vectors. So i is 1, 2, or 4. And this would hold. So this means I can pick x3 and any other variable, x1, x2, and x4, pick any one of them, and this pair could be used as basic variables, and it will give us a basic feasible solution. Okay, so from the discussion we have so far, we can have the following observation. We see that if x3 is chosen as a basic variable, then I can use x3 to express b completely by 3 times v3, by choosing x3 to be 3, then the x3 will be the only variable that's non-zero in the basic solution. So, for example, if we take x1 and x3 as basic variables, and, uh, we can go through the pivoting process. You can do that as a practice to see, and this is what you will get. Okay, so x1, x3 are basic variables, and you see they are pivoted in equation 1 and 2. And then we see the right-hand side, we get a 0. So x1 is 0, and x3 is 3. And x2 and x4 are both 0 because they are non-basic variables. And in this solution, the only non-zero one is x3, which is 3, which is exactly this number here. That's because 3 times v3 completely represents the vector b. Okay? So, um, and this is a tricky situation, actually, later on in the algorithm. We'll incorporate it. We will talk about it. We'll have discussions. Okay, so that's all for, for this video. Hope you liked it, and see you next time.